Shut up and sit down. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Rebel Trading Group Podcast, episode 24. Today's date is June 13th, 2018. My name is Nathan Oliphant, and with me, as always, is the gluten free Jason Bessing. Free. Jason Bessing, what is going on, people? Happy Wednesday, Nathan. Happy hump. It day. is Wednesday, my dudes. It's Wednesday, man. This week is just flying by. This year is week halfway is through the year. Day. Dude, we're already like, yeah, what's today? The 15th? 13th. 13th, yeah, we're almost there, man. Month 6 of 12. Ah, oh, man. Anyway, um, kind of a sideways day in the market, you know, really not – much a little blech day Dow down 119 nasdaq down eight s p down 12 bitcoin getting absolutely slaughtered down five percent for the day we're trading at sixty two hundred dollars sixty two thirty six but it, baby. Uh, cryptos uh, and cryptos across the board are all getting hit yeah they're all getting hammered and ebbs and flows baby ebbs and flows so that's I believe in I believe that's in not, buying the dip. That's not ebbs and flows. That's fun. That's fear, uncertainty, doubt. Oh yeah, flooding. But you know what, Nathan? When it comes back, we're gonna roar up like sixteen percent. It's a weird imbalance of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and fear of missing out. FOMO, fear and greed are the two biggest driving factors. Like it's yeah, it's buying and selling, but people buy because they're trying to make money. They're, it's a little bit of greed. No matter how you put it, you're trying to make more money. When you are a seller, you want out of that, and that's out of fear. You're afraid that you're going to lose money if you continue to hold that position. So, yeah, so fear and greed are what push that market. Push every market, really. Bitcoin's lost almost like $10,000 in <sighs> Oh, yeah. Months. It's getting slaughtered. But you know what? We're going to roar back to like – 8400 and then we'll do with another sideways movement it's all it's all just part of it I, I i feel comfortable still trading the bitcoin i've actually purchased the dip i'm continuing to purchase the dip i've got orders in and to buy more of the dip i so. want to see what some of these experts say about you know people they're saying a uh, bitcoin at 50,000 in a year bitcoin 100,000 in a year someone's got to start buying a lot more bitcoin I mean, if it's at, if it's going to fifty thousand, I would load the fuck up. But I have no idea. I'm wondering if all the people who loaded up and tried to catch that wave too late, i.e., people like me, I bought in for a first time at seventeen thousand. Ooh, baby! I know a lot of people did fifteen, sixteens. Yeah, I'm wondering if those people have sold off and continued to sell off, and like just pulled their money out and said, "Yeah, I tried." And like, how many are actually like trying to sit there and still accumulate more because they believe in the product? Well, so I'm wondering if a, like a lot of this is just people saying, "All right, the money's done. I'm just gonna get my money out. Whatever. I'm done." I think I think it's exactly like that. You don't see like averaging in. I mean, if you're seeing a lot of averaging in, you're gonna see like not a steady decline like that. Mm -hmm. If so many people think, are averaging in, then it's not gonna go down that much. That that direction that way. Yeah. And plus the buyers, we people who are buying it, we push the price down. Remember, buyers pull it down. Pull so it remember, well, the sellers pull it up because if there's more sellers and less buyers, that's a lie. I'm sorry. If there's less sellers, more buyers, it's got to go up. Hey, man, you do yeah. you. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. I, 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 what, however I twisted it, whatever it is, prices get pulled down. Usually it depends whoever's in control, but um, I, I think Bitcoin's <laughs> still here to stay. I think it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. It's got six thousand more dollars to go somewhere. Yeah. So I think it's here to stay. I think it's. I think it is the future. I think it will have kinks. There will be crazy flows, crazy ups, crazy downs, and I'm about that. Play I'm about that. Play so, carefully, people. I'm playing the game. Play carefully. I like it. So continue to sell it. Let me buy more for cheaper, please. That way, when it comes back, I get rich. So, anyway, that's that's besides the story. Oh, Jason, you're so crazy. You ready so for? What do you I'm ready for some market news with Nathan. Ba -do, ba -do, ba -do. A couple things happened over the weekend and week. We have our G7 mm. summit that we went to. Um, 
President Trump joined. He, it was in Canada, right? I don't honestly. I don't know where it was. I'm pretty sure it was in Canada. I know they. I know Canada was there. Oh yeah, so. Canada is part of the G7. A um, bunch of other countries were there. Um, we went into the weekend talking about easing trade tariffs uh, with this uh, uh, G7 summit. Um, I guess all was going good for a while, and then like right at the end, Trump folds his arms and says, "No trade deal. If you're going to be unfair to us, we're going to be unfair to you." So he did that G7. Uh, I felt like that kind of uh, if. It, it had a weird reaction because on Monday the market went up after the weekend. It did. Yeah. It did. It had a, like a little push up. Nothing didn't really give, wasn't – it wasn't wild, right? Did, yeah, no. It didn't didn't give a fuck about um, the G7 summit. Uh, no, Tuesday, it shook it all off. So, it had nothing to do with trading. Yeah, Sunday, Sunday um, Trump flies in hot to Singapore, meets the, one of the most reclusive dictators in the globe – um, shakes his hand, writes an agreement, um, promises of total denuclearization of North Korea were mentioned. Uh, what's good about this, or potentially good about this, because I say that there's like been a lot of promises written on paper uh, between rulers of the free world. The potential good outcome of this is we open up trade relations between the United States and North Korea. Um, this is like it, it becomes like this. Anytime you have a, a, a – you're playing with China's biggest importer or exporter, you're doing a good job. That's a, that's a smart move I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, see what else happened. Uh, and plus there's like there, – there's so much potential there. Like I think they've, they've literally said like we want American investments in Pyongyang. They've said that. Are they and, still like not feeding their people? Dude, there's no money to feed their people. Like yeah, they control the resource. That's why I think this is good. Yeah, I mean, if they brought capitalism, it's gonna, it's gonna bring life back to that. I mean, this is really a, turning into politics, but I if you brought it. capital, if you brought capitalism in there and tourism, uh, we talked about this before. I don't remember the episode. If somebody knows, hit me with it. But there was an episode you and I talked like. If you've actually like seen pictures of North Korea, like it looks very beautiful. There's a lot of uh, very beautiful tall mountains. Ski resorts. Yeah, ski resorts would fly would come in. I think they it, the um, if you know anything about Seoul, they're one of the most technologically advanced um, countries in the world. Uh, over in Korea, in South Korea, especially in Seoul, it's like it's just like another Tokyo. You know, you just move. You know, you just kind of help move that towards the north border and kind of share trade and share technologies and unify the people. Like I think it could do amazing things. And imagine the uh, the investments. Imagine what let would me, it let would. Me just, let me say something about technology and and so uh, I just I don't know like, if I see it. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of like insecurity in the cryptocurrency sphere in in South Korea because I feel like I see like a lot of news coming on the internet. Giggity. Um, about like South Korea uh, cryptocurrency firm or whatever gets hacked, uh, millions if of cryptos. I, it, I just feel like I always see news coming out of South Korea, bad news coming out of South Korea related to uh, cryptocurrencies. If I'm not mistaken, they are the biggest market of all cryptocurrencies. If I'm not mistaken, that would be insane. So that being said. More money touches more hands over there, and with when that happens, there's more fraud, there's more scams, there's more theft, all that stuff. So th- because there's more firms, imagine if there were multiple different coin bases. Like, yeah. do you remember? Do you remember? There are. On- there, are. Okay. there are. There really are. Yeah. But but do you remember like um, online poker sites? There were like dozens of them. Like half of them got hacked, half of them didn't. Because they all had like diff- they all had like different rules, different regulations. They were headquartered in different countries. They were ran by different companies. Just all types of different shit. And it's the same thing. If you have multiple exchanges and multiple websites and multiple different wallets available to users, one of them's going to get hacked. That's the unfortunate reality. If you have twenty different credit cards, one of them's going to get hacked. You know, what's funny is we talk about like the security of Bitcoin. And like the mm. blockchain, but like the actual exchanges and like wallets aren't protected by cryptology, which is what the blockchain is protected by. 
cryptology, if you can look it up on Wikipedia, or fucking the internet, or Google, or Google it, or whatever, it's like the way um, your computer solves the algorithm, or, or, or yeah, I guess they would be an algorithm for this cryptology. Uh, it could be something else. It could be like a riddle. I don't know. It's like different shit. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's cryptology. Like I think Bitcoin. actually, I think cryptology actually is about the the repeating hash hash marks or the hash uh, hashes in the blockchain. I don't remember. Look it up. Someone email us for fuck's sake. Mm-hmm. You know, one thing I have noticed though is uh, cryptocurrency. You never read stories about them like getting erased or like lost. They're like, have you noticed that they're always like successfully stolen or successfully taken? Or successfully transferred. They never just go in and wipe out the accounts like, oh, my Bitcoin got deleted. It's almost like that's not even a real thing. Like right. you can't delete a Bitcoin. And I, I thought that was kind of funny because it's like, oh, well, it's not even there. Like, no, it's there. Someone can physically steal it. Someone – you can steal it from other people. It can be transferred to another person. It's there. But you never. I've never once heard of someone like, I don't know where my Bitcoin went. I think it got erased. You never hear about that. Server crashes, Bitcoin lost. One million Bitcoin deleted from Bitcoin webs. I, like, well, you I have a, you have a, um, you can have like a, uh, what do you call it? They call it a hard wallet. It's like you can download the Bitcoin onto like a. Hard yeah, you drive can actually whatever. pull it off the internet. Yeah, it's like not and online. You can like pull it into a hard drive. Yeah, I've heard about that because that's ways that you can actually safely store. You have like a your, private key. My, yeah, you have my a private, private key, key was like on your... 10, 10 dip random words, and they were really weird. I have them written down somewhere. Yeah, everyone has a very unique one. So, um, anyways, anyway, that's, so, that's crypto. That's fun. Oh, side, can we sidebar real quick? Because it's kind of still in market back. news. But we can I know it is, it is. A, it's a news thing. Okay. Damn. Um, yeah, because you were talking about every the bad news came out of South Korea. Um, a lot of this sell-off from Bitcoin is because – uh, South Korea actually, one of their major exchanges got hacked. A lot of and, exchanges got hacked. Yeah, but this this happened, I think, just on Monday or Sunday night. So that's a, one of the reasons that this sell off is actually happening right now. So it's funny that you said like I always feel like because that actually happened. There's your news for you. Play the news. <laughs> there you go. No, 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 no. That's your news that you said. One podcast you said. I don't feel like there's news mm. coming out of Bitcoin that or cryptocurrencies that move like that's the market true. does. And I understand that's what you were saying. There's no like. Uh, reports coming out. How's Bitcoin doing? I mean, there yeah, are. Like, there's white paper, right, like, or there's forks. You know, there mm-hmm. could be hard forks and soft fork. Hard fork speeds up the blockchains and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's your news right there. Like the uh, the freaking any kind. Or when you hear like the Fed, like uh, when you hear the Fed accept Bitcoin, it's gonna fucking shoot the hell up. Yeah, that'll be the. Day. Or if they finally like guarantee the certainty of it, like. Uh, for instance, like they say, Bit, like the government comes out and say we allowed Bitcoin, but it has the same capital gains tax as other currencies. Yeah. Okay, or that's fine. Versa. We get that, but that means that it has been accepted as a as a security by the Security and Exchange Commissions and the Justice Department. So when it that is allowed as well, even when they say like, hey, we we accept it, but we're going to heavily regulate it. Okay, that's fine, but that means that it is real. It's going to get accepted. Right. I feel like that will also spark it. All right. Shut the fuck up. We're going to finish Market News with Nate. Wow. A uh, couple more things happened. Sorry. I love you. Um, Time Warner, AT&T, uh, they got their case approved. They're allowed to go along, uh, go uh, forward with the accusation. Uh, we need to get Dylan on here so we can chew our ears off about how unethical it is. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> watch those two. Watch that company. I guess T is the ticker symbol for that. See how that reacts. I see uh, Fox News is getting what, are the, uh, what was the news that I sh- uh, yelled out? The $65 billion deal with Fox News. Oh, yeah, news. Comcast. Yeah. So we're doing that now. <laughs> so that's bet, a thing. I bet, you, I bet you they were waiting to pull the trigger as soon as the case got approved. Oh, yeah. TV. I mean, this was all this was all like decided weeks ago. TV is so dead, man. Why, why are you guys even playing these stocks? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's still potential in some areas. There's things, there's bits, there's bits that can be saved. Okay, the Titanic is sinking. We can put some of it on the lifeboats. And inflate the lifeboats, keep them on the ship to try to save the ship. <laughs> but 
the uh, villain was there. I feel I feel like that's the the problem with it. Okay, because Time Warner has a lot of assets. Like they own Warner Brothers, and that that's big with the DC Comics universe, all that a lot good of shit. TV stuff. So there, there's a lot there's a lot of money in that. So I I kind of get it. And plus, it's a declining business. You know, you want to buy businesses when they're cheap. You know. So I don't know. I see a streaming service coming out for Time Warner. Or AT and T. Yeah, you know Disney's coming out with their streaming service, but we're gonna we're actually gonna talk about that a little bit later, Nathan. All right, so you have that. Um, watch those four companies: Time Warner, Fox, Comcast, AT and T. Fun. Um, today, stock uh, the uh, the the Federal Reserve met and they decided, as predicted, uh, back in March and May and April. They raised rates for the second time in 2018. The market did not like that at the end of the day and had a sharp decline towards towards down. <laughs> Are you saying that's the reason we sold off at the last second? Yeah. Oh. Yes. It's, it's, it's definitely plausible. That's for sure. Really? What do you – really? Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that's the reason. I'm sure that's exactly what it is. If I'm looking in the rearview mirror, that's what the reason is. Other than that, that is market news with Nate. And if I missed anything, go dun, ahead and dun, send me dun, an email dun, at rebeltradinggroup at gmail.com. We'll make sure to get that in market news with Nate. Yeah, boy. All right. Let's uh, let's move over. Uh, before we get to our topic of the day, we got one last little bit of housekeeping here, and that is going to be your market terminology for the day. You ready, Nathan? Yeah. What is a market order? Uh, that's basically a you're selling or buying a stock, and um, it's literally if you want to execute the order right away, no questions asked. Give me your best price you have. Um, if you but if, let's say the stock's trading at a hundred dollars, um, there's trades going left and right about mm-hmm. faster than you can blink. There's a nine ninety six, and then there's a one hundred and eighteen. Yeah, those orders are just hundred dollars and eighteen cent. The market there's, order basically, there's like I feel like there's a line of market orders that kind of just like, like it kind of goes in or fucking gets filled and goes out of line and just fucking mm. goes through the, the market line. orders kind of jump the line. Okay, I'm not really thinking about it like a line of limit orders and market orders. Oh, but like market comer orders come in in a chronological order. If I put one in and you put one in, there's not a chance like they're going to be at the same time. Yeah, I get it could saying. be. They could be really close. They could be different fills too. But if you I get hundred, I enter my market two. order before you, I might get a better price or worse price, vice versa. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what I'm exactly. trying to say. That's what I'm trying okay. to say. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Okay. Um. So you you're not setting. You don't care about your price. What the price you're going to get. You're just going to get that stock. Um, yeah. So yeah. Basically, at least the price is in the ballpark you like. Yeah. It's gonna so, be it's yeah. gonna be in the spread. The best way to but to, to put it in layman's terms is that market order basically says, "Give me your best price and give it to me now." Um, that's whether that's on both the buy and the sell side. If you don't like that idea, you would want to use a limit order, which definitely goes hand in hand with the market order. A limit order says, "We're not doing two words in the same class." I know, but you kind of need to understand <laughs> both to kind of grasp the difference. Big dick and the decisions limit order come says, with big dick consequences. <laughs> the limit order says, give me this price and give it to me whenever it hits this price. I don't want any – I don't want to pay any more than this, and I don't want to sell for any less than this. And that's a limit order. Market order says, do it now. Give me the best price. And I feel I feel, I feel like uh, limit orders – this isn't necessarily all, always true, but um, – I'm just gonna say it. I feel like uh, limit orders really ca- or like narrowly cater to traders, and market orders um, broadly cater to investors, long-term investors. Because if I'm trading, I want like I want it precise. Yeah, that's true. But if, hey, I'm, well, if I want I'm investing, in at this price, and I have I have my I have my in, I have my out, and I have my stop loss. But if I'm investing long term, pulling the trigger is like the the the, the easiest thing to do. Mm-hmm. Just give me it. That's true, exactly. And I've done that. I've I've bought things with a ten year mindset, five year mindset. Granted, I still I don't still hold them. But when you buy something with that, you're you're pretty comfortable. Just give it to me now. Give it to me now. But yeah. with 
with you're, you're exactly right with traders they need that exact price and they need to get in here and they need to get out here because that uh, if they miss those windows then they're not touching yeah. it at all if you're someone if who you're, wants it 10 years from now, like yeah fuck it i'm not in this game to, i'm not in this market to try to time it if you're day trading with market orders that's that's, that's, a, that's a real gray dude, area yeah. dude you got some fucking balls <laughs> you might get this every, price. every penny is part of your income yeah like like with day traders, you know, that, and even some swing traders, like that's your income. So every penny, sometimes it's dollars or ten dollars. If you're trading by the thousands of a share, every penny on a market order is ten bucks for you. Yeah. If you're trading by the thousand, so yeah, be careful out there. I I, I prefer limit orders hands down, but like you said, if it's if you just don't give a fuck. I'm gonna give me give me the Dow every Monday at nine thirty opening bell. Okay, a market but, order, market okay, order, market a good, order. A good practice, a good practice I found was always doing market orders. Why is that a good practice? I, I'm sorry, limit orders. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, I think I was gonna say like I was like, oh, explain that one. Yeah, li- limit orders because I just mm-hmm. get then I just get in the habit of doing it. So mm-hmm. if I ever do like try and um you know utilize my capital on a weekly basis, um. I I already know like you know if I if I see like a jump down or jump jump up I can kind of predict my limits and stuff like that and really pinpoint it and get mm-hmm. a good, good good habit and an experience. Yeah. The other thing I like about limit orders is because it, it puts it back on that set it and forget it. Like you know you got your stop loss in and you've got your sell order in and you can walk away. You don't have to watch it anymore cuz you know with if one of those hits, it's going to be done, it's all is going to be said and done. You don't have to go back and say, "Well, fuck, now I need to adjust it. I need to fix the trade." And yeah. that's another reason why I like the limit orders. I don't know who's market ordering by the hundreds. That's I don't <laughs> such a dirty that, price. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I just that's a good uh that's today's market terminology is market order if you have any more questions or would like us to explain it even further or you we were wrong in any way shape or form please email us at rebel trading group that's with two g's rebel trading group at gmail.com we are also on facebook rebel trading group and we are also now on soundcloud and youtube so make sure you like us and subscribe us there um for fan mail my name is jason for hate mail uh please send nathan. that to nathan <laughs> so yeah, we should uh, uh, definitely fire our social media liaison. Get a new yeah, guy. motherfucker. He hasn't uh, done anything on that Facebook. He's so done. Castrated. I'm gonna hire Dylan. <laughs> I can trust him more. We need interns. <laughs> we need interns. We're looking for interns. Well, <laughs> if you are interested in a career in social media development, you may email us at Rebel Trading Group. That's two G's. Rebel Trading Group at Gmail dot com. We are also on Facebook, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Yeah, we're currently a non-profit, so like that might help your your. Uh... But if we go to the moon, you're coming with us. Yeah, you're hired. Almost, you're almost like literally hired. Like you're there with us. You're 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 an investment to this product. Welcome to OB Capital. Make it a T-shirt. I like it. Anyway, <laughs> yo, real quick before I, I don't even know if I want to bring this up. I might just save it for a whole nother topic. So I'm gonna skip it, and if we want to talk about it later, I'll bring it up. But today, what I wanted to talk about. Um, We briefly touched on it yesterday. I want to talk about realizing a loss or realizing a gain. And I know that we before we've done an episode on accepting a loss, but that's more about like the psychology behind like when do you finally like admit that you have a loser. Today I want to talk about like realizing it. And for for a better understanding, what I mean is. You buy a stock at $100, and at the end of the day, it's at $97. You technically didn't lose $3. You're down $3. Your investment has decreased in value, but you have not lost that $3 per se because you can, at the end of the day, sell your stock and collect it for 97 It still has a $97 value. So you don't actually realize the loss until you sell. And that's the same the other way. If you bought the stock at $100 and it goes to 110 very quickly, you didn't make $10. You sell it at $110 and then you realize the $10 gain. Keyword real. Realize it, baby. Realize it and legalize it. Nathan. I feel like realizing it comes before accepting it. 
because you come to that realization before you accept. I feel like if you accept it before you come to the realization, you've you've jumped to conclusions before you've made a rational decision. That's true. That's true. I I definitely can sign it, but uh, can you can kind of flip that too and say like you. So you're saying like you realize the gain and then you kind of like mourn over it, like well, kind of had like, like a loss. Yeah, I guess you could like, you could apply it to a gain, but I'm more talking. It's more easier to talk or or exemplify it with a with a loss. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's there's the realization of it. Yeah, I mean, it could you could have pre and post realizations. Mm-hmm. Before, I mean, like, because if you accept it, that's it. Like, like you accept, you, you like, could, like you, you accept can realize, it you, you can realize your, your losses and then continue to keep realizing them. They're they're really happening. <laughs> I, I think you might be confused on what I'm saying. Like when you like you don't actually like like realizing it means that like when you bought it at a hundred and it goes down. Let's say like because like you said, it's easier with the loss. It goes down to eighty. You technically you still have that stock. It's just now valued at eighty dollars. So to a lot of people, you're like, "Oh, you lost twenty dollars." You're like, "No, no, I didn't really lose twenty dollars. I just, I my, my investment is down twenty dollars, and and I don't, I'm not going to lose that twenty dollars until I sell it." You get know what I'm saying? I guess so, man. <laughs> I guess so, man. No, I mean, I get so, what yeah. you're saying. I just don't know if I don't know if you understand realization though. Well, I get, I get what you're saying. You mean like realizing it, like psychologically look at it, like, oh, I'm realizing that I'm losing. I should probably be done. But like, there's a difference between. Okay, so if your portfolio, if you, if you put in a thousand dollars, and those, and then a year later, those same investments are worth two thousand dollars, you didn't really make that thousand dollars. You don't have that thousand dollars until you actually sell the stock and have oh, okay. the money. The gain isn't actually realized, until and I think until you've collected your chips and gone to the cage. Collect, it's just like just like in Wolf of Wall Street, Matthew McConaughey is like he buys the stock at eight and now sits at sixteen. He wants to run, he wants to liquidate, he wants to. You don't let him do that, no, because that would make it real. So what do you do? You get another brilliant idea. You get another stock. That's, that's, a, a, that's how traders trade, though. I mean, yeah, I don't know. And that, yeah, well, that's how it is because you know you. You want to realize you liquidate, you well, let them run. How, how do you how do you realize that? What, what 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 can you suggest to to, to to So I mean, like you said, it it definitely does come back to like accepting that you have a loss. So I, I guess I kind of brought this up because a lot of people have that stigma that like once you invest in the stock market, suddenly everything you have and are worth is at stake. Yeah, I've actually heard, I heard a story of someone like started investing in stocks and their wife literally thought like they could lose their house. I'm pretty because, sure like, like I've told some people about like stocks and they've had that same impression. Yeah, they they literally think like you can literally just go bankrupt. Like, well, no, you lose what you put in. It's, it's just like going to the casino. Like if you go to the casino, you go to a blackjack table. Like maybe in the 20s you could bet your shoes. You know, but like you can't go put your shoes on the craps table and be like, all right, let's play. No, you basically you can only lose the the money that you put in. And that's the same with stocks. But anyway, yeah, I, I, I kind of wanted to bring this up because it's the same thing. Like when you buy your favorite, you know, you buy your stock, you finally pull the trigger on the trade. You say, I'm going to buy here at twelve dollars. I'm buying forward at twelve dollars even. And at the end of the day, it goes to eleven eighty seven. And you're like, oh shit, I'm down a lot. So you finally, it's like you're realizing, like, okay, so I'm down a little bit. Now you can choose to either adjust the trade, and basically the only way to do that is average down. Yeah, but you're not realizing at that point. Exactly, you still haven't realized that your your losses haven't been made real. They haven't actually become a physical, of I guess maybe even fiscal reality. Like the money hasn't been transferred yet. The the sell order hasn't gone through. So the value has reflected, yeah. So you can still choose to either adjust the trade, put in new orders, new stop losses, average down, or you can choose to realize the loss. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. And, you know, if if it's something you haven't really – 
it's something that we all do, but it's not something that you really think of. It's, it's one of those things. That's what I always thought driver's ed was. It's like, yeah, we all we all do these things, but it's not no, not really much that you think of. Um, but yeah, I just kind of I kind of wanted to just kind of bring that to light. Cause I feel like that's a really beginner. I feel like it's a really beginner kind of thing to overcome. Mm-hmm. It's and something I'm that you have it, to learn about. I don't know. I, I guess my realization is when I when I retire. Like that's when all the sell orders go through and the trading stops. So you're not you're not pulling out trading. You're not pulling out money. You're not pulling out profits to use for everyday expenses, bills, gas, all that stuff. Your well, let's goal say, let's say I was. is to just compound as much as possible until both. retirement. Both. Doing a little both. bit of both. See, that's my goal. I, I'm not quite there yet. You know, we're both fresh out of college, we're about a year out of college, and we're working. We're paying off those debts. Kind of, we're really starting to build that nest egg. But my goal is like in seven years to be able to trade from home with my own money and not only pay my own bills, but continue to grow my account and leave some money in there in order to grow it for retirement. Yep. I think, I mean, I think that's the dream. My, so, I mean, thought, man, if I could just trade from home, oh, Nathan. We could work and then trade. That's we can I mean. form an LLC. We can day trade under OB Capital for tax purposes. And... Mm. That's my goal. I think I think that's a podcast, man. Okay. I think that's a I think that's just a quick one. I wanted to bring realization of the gains. Remember, it, it works the other way. Your hundred dollar share goes to hundred twenty. You didn't make that twenty bucks yet until you sell it. It's not real. Until you decide that you are done with that trade, it's not real. It's just so, a stock. It's just the stock. So realize your profits. If you want to get out, realize them. Make them real. If you want to get out of the stock, unfortunately, sometimes when you when you have those cells and you went down, you're going to have to realize a loss. When you make it real, it's okay. You can move on. You go to the next thing. Keep your head up. Come out when the bell rings. Come out swinging. All right, man. I think we should wrap that watching? up. What am what I are you watching? watching? Ooh, boy, you know me. Not watching nothing. <laughs> well, I'll go first then. I am watching – Disney. I haven't really used her in a while. She used to be one of my core holdings for the longest time, and she has been in that range from 90 to like, and I'll say like 96 to about 102, and she's been there for like s- about eight months. Been there for a while. Um, she's slowly creeping up. She was in the 104 range at the beginning of the week. She's now at 106.31. She was actually the leader on the Dow day, going up 2%. Um, closing at 106.31. I think she has a lot of momentum going forward. I really think she does. I hope she does. Uh, she's one of my favorite stocks. They are struggling with ESPN, but they are shaving off Get that. Get rid of it. <laughs> and um, when they finally do and those numbers come in that show that ESPN has been cut, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look good on the numbers, and investors will flock to it. So – if you can have a five plus year outcome, I think Disney is a good place to park the money. I'm going long Disney. This is not a trade. This is a long term hold. Nathan. Okay, I guess. Uh, you know what? Um, I don't know, man. Oh, what am I watching? I was watching GE the other day. I'll go with GE. You like GE? Yeah, I like the dividends. Um. It's cheap, cheap as shit. Thirteen eighty nine right now. Thirteen eighty nine. Do you think she can? Do you think she can see above sixteen by the end of the year? God, her charts looks look atrocious. Dude, she, I don't know where the, to fucking the, read that thing on a technical level. It's down, no idea. It's down. It's it's like cut in half the past year. Oh yeah, it was like thirty nine percent last year alone. If you're looking at the one year one year chart now, it's at one next, chart, one, one year chart. One year chart, it's down fifty fifty percent, almost fifty one percent. Um, I don't know. Can she turn around? God, I fucking hope so. If they if they continue to pay that dividend, I don't give a shit if they turn around. 
I mean, uh, I guess it, I do because they're gonna just keep cutting it. Because I know she kept. I know she cut it like twice already. But it's do you almost, happen to know what the yeah. yield is right now? Yeah, it's almost at five percent on a thirteen dollars stock. <laughs> Still? Yeah. No. That's, I'm looking at it right now. Four point eight one. Yeah, that's going to have to get cut again. I'm looking at 3.43 according to E-Trade. But even that, that's still high. They should be they should be like 1%, 1.5%. You know what it is? If they cut that dividend, it's going to start another sell-off. Yeah. That's think what happened how many, to uh, Tiva. Like 60, think of how many 65, 70-year-olds, their entire portfolio has been General Electric for like 25 years. And now all of a sudden it's not going to be the dividend income earner. That it was supposed to be. People were raised like buy General Electric. It's the same as today is buy Apple, buy S and P, buy General Electric, buy Big Blue, IBM. And nah, people aren't doing that. I think more people are buying fucking I know, mutual funds I'm, than rather stocks. Well, I'm saying that like the that that generation is still stuck in own Coca Cola, own General Electric, own utilities. That kind of shit. So the second that this gets cut, all those people are going to flock to other shit. This is going to get crushed even more. I think it's going to turn around, dude. I think we're fine. You just got to have, you got to have at least a five year outlook, though. And you'll collect that cash along the way, that dividend. Have you looked at uh, Robinhood's categories? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I like it. I mean, I, I'm on this most I most like popular because there was like 2013 IPO and 2015 IPO that was cool to see. But I don't like to look at like top 10 most traded stocks. No, I don't like. What? Like, don't show me. That. Why? You know, I just you don't because like volume? that's like. Are you gay? I, I mean, I like I like <laughs> I like the volume. I mean, I can tell you, I can give you 10 stocks that have well over five million volume every single day. Looking at one of them right now, Group the on? GE. Oh. The G. So I just I don't know. I feel like it's kind of like a scummy thing. It's kind of like a stock twits thing. Nah, I like it. Oh. Hmm. I mean, hey, dude, if it works for you, if it's a pattern that works, if it's something you enjoy, I can exploit it. Everyone is a little different, but I mean, go for it. I think Balk it's interesting. What, what was that? Respect. What was that saying? Respect. Uh, was respect respect but verify? I heard it, you should do with every like stock tip and every stock news alert and all that stuff. You should respect it. Your your friend says, "Oh yeah, check this out." Okay, respect his opinion, but verify. Do your own research. See if it works for you. All that goodness. So I like I like that idea. Respect but verify. All right, man. I think that's it, man. That was a fun one. Yeah, we should do this it. again this week. We'll do another one. Thursday or Friday. Maybe mm, both. Probably not either. Busy, Ooh. Busy both days. Maybe solo cast. Maybe. By the way, I saw solo. I, I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I was I was I was blown away. I, I I wouldn't say I was blown away. I thought it was much better than I expected. It definitely exceeded expectations. I enjoyed it. That's good. Long days. Long Diz, D-I-S, baby. So that's a podcast. RebelTradingGroup at gmail.com. Email us questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, or insults. We are also on Facebook. We are on SoundCloud. We are on YouTube. Just search Rebel Trading Group or Rebel Trading Podcast. Nathan. Have a good one, guys. Have a good one. Happy trading. Bye.